What's up filmmakers? It's Justin Romine here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's lesson, we're taking a look at my personal color grading workflow in DaVinci Resolve. So let's get it going. So I have some clips already imported. The, the footage is already here. I'm not going to teach you how to do all that setup. If you need to know how to do that, just YouTube it. It's going to be real easy. But these are red Komodo files in red raw. So let's head over to the color grading tab and I'll walk you through exactly what I do. Now I'm gonna be gearing this tutorial as if you know nothing about color grading in DaVinci Resolve. If you have experience in node-based color grading, then that's great, uh, but I gotta start from scratch in case there are some beginners watching this video. So the biggest thing to understand about DaVinci color grading is the nodes are basically there to help you organize your color grade and to organize the sequence at which you color grade. Sequencing is very important, and that's why I don't like color grading in Premiere, because you can't control that as easily. All right, so the first shortcut, if you wanna add more nodes, is Option S on Mac. It's gonna be Alt S on PC. So I'm just gonna do a five basic node structure of what I would normally do. I'm gonna take the color space transform, and I'm gonna drag that on the second to last node, and you'll see why in a bit. The input gamma I'm going to pick uh, to be what it is on the camera, which is log 3G10. The input color space was red wide gamut. So I'm gonna pick that. And then the output color space, by default, it's gonna be rec 709, so I don't have to change that. However, I do think my timeline is at a different output gamma, and I want that to be 2.4. That's the most common type of gamma uh, that you see on screens. So there you go, just look at what that already did to the color grading. I didn't have to drag LUTs on there. I didn't have to find and download a log to Rec. 709 conversion LUT. This is all within DaVinci Resolve, which is absolutely mind blowing. Color space transform. All right, so after we add the color space transform, we're gonna go to that last node. We're gonna add a film emulation plugin called Dehancer Pro. And we're gonna disable that node for now, uh, Command D, and we'll come back to that. What I wanna do is get this image looking even better. I get this in a good place uh, before we do any of this film emulation uh, additions. And the reason I did the color space transform on the second to last node is because I'm gonna do all my other correction and grading before that. And the reason being, and why you wanna do it in this order, is because you're gonna have the most amount of information in dynamic range uh, leading up to your color space transform. So you're gonna be working in the log space for the color grade and then transform it at the end. But so we can see how it's gonna look uh, in the Rec. 709 space, it's good to already have this active. But these nodes, as you can see from the little thumbnail, are still in the log space, which is great. So first node, if I'm gonna label this, is gonna be contrast. Second node is going to be saturation. Third node, color correction. We'll add one more just to have fun with it. And this is going to be my actual grade. Any other tweaks that I want to make to the image. Contrast, let's look at the image and see how it's doing. The good part is from my end, contrast is already looking pretty good, but what I wanna do is tweak it just a little bit. So I'm gonna go over to my curves. I'm gonna get a little more detail in the blacks, and then I'm gonna add editable splines, and that's gonna allow me to grab this and be able to make small tweaks to the shadows. And then for the highlights, we don't really have anything clipping, maybe this top light, but that doesn't matter as much. I'm going to just make the image pop just a little bit by bringing this up. And that looks pretty good. Then we're going to go over to our primaries, color wheels. I'm just going to take the offset, which is exposure. Just drop that down a little bit more. Because we are going for kind of a, a dark, like futuristic look for this grade. So that's what I want it to kind of feel like. I'm going to bring highlights down just a touch. Maybe 97, that looks good. I'm going to bring up under the HDR wheels. I'm going to go to my shadows. 
I'm going to bring those up slightly just to get a little bit more detail back in the shadows, give it more of that HDR look. And then I'm going to go to the lights. The thing about HDR that I love is you're controlling these many different sections of the clip in small chunks so you can really isolate each area like lights you can see exactly what parts of the image is being altered whenever i adjust lights so i'm just going to bring that down a little bit give it more of a soft like film look that looks pretty good all right now saturation let's say contrast is pretty good let's go command d you can see exactly what we did there, it just makes it pop a little bit more, which is exactly what contrast is supposed to do. Saturation, we're gonna go to our primaries and we're just gonna crank the saturation a little bit and we'll go over to vector scope and see exactly uh, what colors are popping where. You can see the reds are like way blown out over here. So I am actually gonna go to my hue versus sat I'm gonna take the reds and you'll see on the vector scope as I pull this down, what that's doing. This will also help if I go to luminance versus saturation, because a lot of this is gonna be in the highlights. So I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna take this all the way down from the top. You can see exactly what that's doing. If I increase the saturation of the highlights or I decrease it, I'm gonna decrease it and then increase it slightly have a slight roll up right there. The saturation isn't always just, okay, let's saturate the image. It's what colors of the image are you trying to saturate more than others? And we can always come back to this. This is why it's isolated. But you can see if I enable disable sat, what it's doing, it's just giving a little bit more diminished in the highlights, uh, but still giving that saturated look. All right, now over to color correction. I would say this image for my taste has a lot of magentas in it right now. I want it to feel a little bit more green and this could almost be more of a grade. Granted, the color correction is supposed to be more of a, let's get this into a balanced temperature and tint correction. I'm gonna look at my vector scopes right there. You can see it was pushed more towards magenta over here. If you have this directly in the middle, that's gonna be like your pure, perfectly color corrected image. So I'm gonna move this back this direction, balance it out. And that is probably more of a balanced image. So now let's go over to grade. For grade, we were going for more of the futuristic dark vibe, right? Well, I love how in certain films, like the green really pulls through. Uh, and then we wanted this to, give more of a cooler type bluish to cyan like tone over the whole thing. So let's go ahead and take the offset right here and just bring it way down. I know this is kind of opposite of what we did on the other one. I want to add some blue in there. I want it to feel a little cooler. In the highlight parts in the gain, I'm going to go and add a little bit of the opposite of what I just did. And as you can see, that's kind of affecting like too much. So I'm going to reset that and I'm going to go into the log wheels and take the highlights and then boost it because I don't want it to affect other parts of the image. I just want it to affect the highlights. We'll go back to the primaries, take your lift and bring that down even more. Now, see, this looks really blue greenish, right? It's kind of looking a little wonky right now, but how we can make this to where it looks a little bit more professional is we're gonna go over to the luminance versus saturation again, and we're gonna desaturate the darks because you do want your blacks to be pretty close to black to make it kind of a believable feel. You can see if I were to take the black point and just drag that all the way down, that you have this grade of uh, saturation that's going from de completely desaturated to highly saturated right here. We don't want that look. So we're going to just take the blacks and we're going to add a point right here and we're going to pull it away. And you can kind of see where the waveform is kind of sitting right here. We want to desaturate the blacks from about right there. So all of a sudden, just by cleaning up the blacks a little bit, you can see what that does to our image. It gives it more of a believable look. 
and now we'll go over to the dehancer. You can see when I enable it, it kind of makes it look like trash instantly, right? But that's because a lot of other things are selected on here. It's not because dehancer doesn't know what to do. I wish that it didn't enable so many things. Uh, I wish that it came with them disabled and I can enable exactly what I need. I'm gonna disable a lot of what is already enabled. Then I'll walk you through how I apply Dehancer to get a film emulation look uh, for my color grading. Source, this is a Rec. 709 because we already converted it. So we're gonna keep it at Rec. 709. The reason I like doing this is because I can go in and take this node and go over to my key and reduce the amount of uh, addition of that film emulation look. If I just go in and I add it uh, to this main conversion node, then I can't control the output of that film look. Let's go ahead and enable the film tab and you can go through and select any of these film emulation stocks that they have here. Uh, depending on the look that you're going for. So it's really cool that you can just click and play uh, and see how it affects your image, see how it can push and pull the different colors. Let's go for the Kodak Vision 3 200T. And as you can see, it does on the waveform, it compresses the image so you can see how much it raised the blacks. What you can do here is enable this and you can set your black point and your white point to get a little bit more contrast added back in your image without having to go back and change anything on your primaries or your curves. I kind of like that look right there, the whites, I like where they're at. Then you can also add a print emulation if you would like. This is in addition to the film stock, is a film print, um, but I am gonna leave that disabled as of right now um, and then you can add in your grain for this we are going for a futuristic more cleaner look so i'm not going to add any grain but you can adjust film grain halation what i love about dehancer is that it's basically a bunch of presets all in one so i'm not having to create a different halation node a different film stock node a different blooming node all these different things, you just drag and drop one plugin and then you can change all these different tabs within that same plugin. Vignette, let's enable that. It just draws our focus a little bit more towards, and you can see if we feather it, there's with no feathering, and then we can max it out. That's pretty good right there. And you see enable, disable, just adds a little bit. I like to think of color grading as a bunch of little fine tweaks that give a big effect when they're combined together. Each node, if you disable it and enable it, there may not be a huge difference, but then it's the compound effect of each and every little thing that you do that leads to the overall look of an image. So, and then down here, there's an output tab. It's basically the same as if I were to go down here and do the key output and reduce the impact of that node. But you can do it right here within the node itself. There's without Dehancer, and then there is with Dehancer. So you can see it, it definitely gives it more of a film look, a little less contrasty, a little less poppy, uh, but it alters the colors in a way that I think is really pleasing to the eye, depending on the project that you're working on. And so the final thing I would add to this image, I would add another node, and I would go to the blur tab and I would pull that down because we're gonna take out blur, which is gonna add sharpening, especially because red doesn't add sharpening in uh, to the raw codec at all. So you're getting a completely raw image and so there's no sharpening. So we're gonna add that in in post, we'll say 0.46. Say this is my base grade that I'm gonna use for this project in this location. I grab the still by right clicking on the image pops up the still right there so then I can go over to this other clip and this is no grade at all and I can right click apply grade there's that grade applied right there pretty cool it gives like the the same basic look and then you can go in and tweak and do uh, contrast corrections exposure you can do all that uh, once you already have the base grade applied so yeah I hope this wasn't too overwhelming for you I hope you found this tutorial helpful if you did give me a thumbs up I will also post the link to check out Dehancer in the description below and I do have a promo code if you want to use that and we'll catch you filmmakers next time